So today we're talking about areas that are very passionate to me. We're talking fitness, exercise and movement and the mind as well. And before we get to that, I just want to talk about where we are as we near or we're within or even past the menopause years, because this is really a time of power. Too often we can think of it perhaps as a time where we're losing, where we're not able to do or be, or we're not quite as young as we were before. And I think if we can change our focus and especially through activity, we can change our focus and instead focus on the power that we have within on all the experience that we bring to the table and what we have to offer the world. And really it's a time to focus on you and me. So with that being said, why do we want to ensure there's a, that we have a regular consistent exercise program as we go through this journey. There's many reasons, which I will go into later. However, I also understand that there's many women that do struggle severely with symptoms. And probably the last thing you want to do is actually don an outfit and have a workout. I feel, you know, you might feel hot, you might feel tired, and working out is probably one of those things that can be put to the side. But as with so many things, often the things we don't go back to our parents what they used to tell us often the things that benefit us most probably are going to be things that we don't necessarily want to do or they're going to be hard work and so that's the very same thing when it comes to an exercise regime going through this program but they just might benefit our symptoms they will benefit our health and wellness and our brain and our mind and aren't those reasons enough to don your sparkly outfit or is that just me and get moving and you never know it really could change or reduce some hot flashes and in turn reduce what they call the domino effect that Angela and I did discuss in one of the episodes previously and this is whereby some somatic symptoms such as hot flashes let's say as an example can happen and then or night sweats and with the night sweats could come us then uh, something physical happening a physical change such as not being able to sleep and of course with not being able to sleep that knocks our happiness it knocks our our clear mind it, it just take gives our mood perhaps it's not as, as easy to be happy and calm it can affect a few things and so this could help with the domino effect again more reasons to get moving and this I feel is extremely important Exercise is a way to have feel like you have a semblance of control over your body during a time where there are many things happening where we have no control whatsoever. We're completely lacking in the fat in control when it comes to the estrogen that's being depleted. We can't do anything about that necessarily. But exercise allows you to feel strong and feel your strength. It allows you to feel the control of what it is you're doing in the moment. You feel and experience the power of you, my friends. You feel and experience the power of your body and it's there by focusing on how you feel how a movement feels itself is taking our minds also away from the challenge away from the negativity of what we might be feeling or the challenge of what we might be feeling and that's going to be a benefit too because we're refocusing our mind so as we heard from the dietitian tila there are four areas especially that are worth focusing on when it comes to keeping ourselves healthy as we age. Cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, hypertension, and of course we have weight gain, which typically comes around the middle as we know, and that's the area that we don't want it, but we can get rid of it. We really can. When done right, there is hope. So getting the heart pumping and ensuring that we're working ourselves hard, along with the lungs, working hard as well so that we're forced to breathe deeply. These are all things that are gonna help us when we're doing cardio exercising. And it also helps increase our cardiorespiratory function. We know that our estrogen does start decreasing, if not depleting, as we go through this journey. And that metabolic risks can be associated with this. So by exercising, we're doing things like increasing our good fat. There is good fat, my friends, and we're doing good things when we're exercising. And also it helps us decrease the fat that we want to get rid of, or at least lower, which is the LDL. And of course, along with the benefits listed above, we're helping reduce high blood pressure. We're helping reduce the possibility of heart attack and stroke. There's many things. 
there are only good reasons to do this, right? There's only reasons that are going to help you. And uh, I understand as well that there's many people out there that don't like exercising. There's many clients I've come across that don't. And in order to be able to do this, you just find ways in which it's more doable for you, more enjoyable. So on top of the reasons above, in order to work, think about this as well. Moving helps us reduce our stress helps us improve our mood. I mean, what's not to love there? Because we know those can be affected as we go through menopause as well. So let me offer you a few tips and tricks along the way to do this. And especially for those that don't enjoy working out, I have a few thoughts, a few ideas to help you. And that's stress, first of all, as well, that if you have any kind of health issues whatsoever, um, muscle or joint problems, you always want to make sure you speak to your doctor first. Tell them what it is that you want to do, what you want to start so that they know what you're doing and they can guide you. Always talk to them first and then you know you're good to go. Here are some ideas on why to incorporate and how to incorporate cardio exercises into your everyday. And these ideas also could very well apply to strength training, which I will get to later. First of all, find something you enjoy. This is key. You don't have to be running on a treadmill for an hour if you can't stand doing something like that. This helps you stay consistent at what it is you're doing, which is the end game. That's very important. And keep in mind things like dancing and tennis, they're considered cardio. So have a look at what there is out there and pick something in a way you love to move. Have a playlist that pumps you up. This is so important. Act move, music rather that has a really good bass beat to it is important. So find something, you know, what gets you moving when you're sitting down and you can't wait to stand up. Also, Find an anchor that you can connect your exercising with. And we work with clients all the time in life coaching and health coaching with things like this. An anchor is something you do all the time without fail. So therefore you could connect your cardio workouts if you find them challenging to it. You do one, you know you're gonna do the other. Another idea is to have your clothes ready, have your shoes ready. They can sort of make you feel like you should do something then if you're seeing them sitting there. Have them ready, that does so much for our mindset. Do something with a friend. There's nothing like doing this kind of thing with a friend. And there's many reasons for it. You know, it's gonna help your mindset because you're probably gonna be talking with them and laughing with them as you go. So we know it's very good for our mindset. Also, you're being social, but at the same time, there's that hint of accountability. You'll feel bad if you decide not to do something one day. Get your friend doing this with you. That's a huge one and it really does help. It's also important to start slow. No point in trying to run a marathon right off the bat or trying to, to say that you'll do an hour of running at three times a week or five times a week if this isn't your thing. You're surely going to fail and then you'll feel annoyed with yourself. Start small. Break your workouts into small walks. Break them into chunks of maybe 10 minutes as well. Start as small as you can to build up then. It's not about quantity at this point and it's not about perfection it's about the quality of getting the exercises in and making this a consistent habit and remember to modify for who you are now this is an important point my friends we're not necessarily that 20 year old woman anymore who could maybe do crossfit who could do certain things at a really high level maybe you are but if you're not understand that's okay you want to be mindful of your joints and you want to be mindful of where your body is now and work with that it's very important another thing is finding somewhere you love do you love to be outside in the forest in nature do you love to be in arenas do you love to be around people find somewhere you want to all of these things will make it a positive experience and more able you'll be more able to actually do this on a consistent basis but lastly and really importantly and i go through this with my clients all the time remember your why your why, keep it at your forefront. We're off, we often do things um, that we don't love, but we know that they benefit us, i.e. brushing our teeth, flossing our teeth, things like that. We don't exactly love it, but we know that it benefits our health. Exercising is the very same thing, my friends, very same thing. It's imperative we incorporate CV exercising or cardiovascular exercising into our days and really connect it to your why. Maybe you want to get up and down with your grandchildren. Maybe you want to be able to go walking more regularly with friends for longer. Remember also that every time we exercise, we're creating a caloric deficit in our system. And this in itself is helping to decrease or minimize that midlife weight gain. These are all good reasons, aren't they? Absolutely.
So now let's talk about strength training. This is a real love of mine in particular. Another important area of focus for our workouts in order to help us slow the process of normal bone loss that can happen with menopause and with age. And in this in itself creates brittle bones, which of course can lead to osteoporosis, according to the National Institute of Health. And by strength training, we can also help reduce things like low back pain. We can help improve our mood, reduce stress to areas that are really can be affected when we go through menopause. It also preserves lean muscle mass. So that helps us with the battle around the middle as well, since of course it can be very prevalent during this time of life for us women. Ladies, there's great news. We can do something about it. We absolutely can. So many women I hear say they can't. We can. You just have to know what to do and how. We won't necessarily get rid of it all, but we will definitely improve it. And at the end of the day, we just need to want to as well. So again, it doesn't need to be rocket science doing this. And as I say to my clients, just keep these things simple and shine. Yes, I have a program called that. Uh, remember, just as with our cardio workouts, when we're strength training, we need to be very careful of our muscles and our joints and aware that we may have to modify things from that 20 year old self again that we were. And that's okay. So other things to think about. And then I'll offer some particular ideas that you want to have in your toolbox. Just start. Stop saying tomorrow, next week, or I will. Just start now. You'll be proud of yourself if you do. That's a big one as well. And perhaps start by holding light dumbbells as you go for a walk. And my friends, I don't want to see you walking around the park with 50 pound dumbbells. You get the idea, something light, just to get the heart pumping and just to get your muscles working. Listen to music that pumps you up. Really, when it comes to anything like this, listen to music that makes you want to move, makes you feel strong. And again, think of that time of day that you would most like to do this, that you're most energized. For me personally, it's in the morning. If it gets to the afternoon, I'm probably not going to work out. And also, maybe I'm biased here, but work out with a health coach, a trainer, a physio, a kinesiologist, anyone that can help you with your form. It's quality over quantity here, my friends. It really is. There's no point in doing an awful lot of something or with heavy weights if you're doing everything incorrect and going to be creating injury down the road. A trainer or somebody within that field is going to be able to tweak things and show you proper form. And then you're starting from a place of knowledge, as I said before. Now, if you don't want to work with someone for months or years, then why not hire them for one session just to ensure that your form is correct? It's really important. I do this all the time with people. It's so important and I love it when people ask me to do this. Feel your power, ladies. This is a time where you can truly feel powerful. And speaking of that, what would be some exercises to keep in your toolbox? I'm going to go over them now. There's many, by the way, and I will be putting more information on my website or on the Facebook page. More about that later. Something could be like the wall squat really use your quads when you're doing that or the Smith squat if you're in the gym. So that's very important. And for those legs, the leg press, if you've ever been to a gym, is very important as well. And it's very easy to do squats, that kind of thing. And of course, upper body is just as important as those lovely legs, my friends. Things like the lat pull down, which can be done, yes, at the gym on the machine, but get creative, modify, use a band things like that, as well as maybe the one arm. Sometimes it's good to do things one side and then the other. Keep your body guessing, I tell people. Rows, again, with bands, with weights. And if you need to start all of these things with just your body weight and not using weights, that's fine too. Start where you can. If you don't have a membership, that's fine. There's ways of doing things at home. And you also want to remember with any of these that if you have issues, especially when doing the back things with your back, that you do talk to somebody and get the idea on form. A full body regime is wonderful to do if you're alternating days. You can also do one day upper and one day lower. What these workouts are doing is creating strong within you. And I love that. Get creative. Use your body. As I said, if you don't have those hand weights, let's not forget. That again, as I said with cardio, we're not that 20 year old self. You may or may not find that you have to do different things and modify for where your body is right now. And that's always okay. Build up the strength from the place that works for your body, and then you'll feel very empowered. And it's just doing an awful lot of good then for your joints as well. And remember, you can do a full body regime, making sure you have days in between for rest for your body, or you can alternate upper and lower anything that is creating more strong within you. 
don't have hand weights, as I said, get creative. Maybe you can use soup cans, use your body weight. There's many more ways of doing these things. Again, there will be more about this on both the Facebook page and on my website, which I will let you know about later. But in the meantime, I also want to talk about slowing down. It's just as important for our mind and our body to slow down as it is to speed up and do these high impact or strength training exercises. And that's actually what I'm going to be talking about next. So keeping our body balanced, flexible and stretched is just as important as I mentioned. These areas can often be areas that are overlooked. Methods such as Tai Chi, yoga, meditation and stretching. During menopause, of course, we know that some women can struggle with anxiety, with depression and other symptoms that are similar. And these forms of exercise as well are really benefiting our body and our mind and are great ways to reduce tension. Yoga and meditation in particular because of the deep breathing that they create within. Stretching and flexing our body helps keep our joints flexible. And this in turn helps us do those cardio exercises, do those strength training exercises better, more. And also, it's all connected as we realize one thing that we do is all connected to other things that we do. It helps to preserve our range of motion, which is very important as well. And this can tend to decrease with age as well. So when you connect that with the fact that it helps with our stress, there's more and more research to show as well that hip stress can have a bearing on mind stress. So why not do stretching of the hips in order to help, if it does, our minds as well. Lastly, I'm going to talk about stability and balance. We know that balance can be affected with age. And so it's very important for us to have an area of focus in our toolbox of activity for balance as well. It allows us to stand upright, which is probably really a good thing. I always think yes. So really good to do this kind of thing. And back to those hips, the strength of our hips is important so that balance exercises such as the forward tip, things like that are something that we can do in order to keep helping our hips stay nice and strong amongst other things. There's many things that you can incorporate to help your hips. And Tai Chi is also really good because not only balance is improved, but also it helps with our coordination as well. So there's loads of options when it comes to this kind of thing. And at the end of the day, again, it's finding what you like. What do you enjoy? What would help you calm right down? And remember, at the end of the day, anything is better than nothing. We can spend years saying tomorrow and it doesn't matter and we will. But honestly, there's no time like the present. Why not? And knowing that this may be helping your symptoms of menopause, but you know you're helping your health in general, the health of your brain, the health of your body, the health of your mind, isn't that reason enough to just get moving in some way? How important are you to you? I ask my clients this all the time. We help so many other people. How important are you to you? Bottom line, that's the question to keep in mind when you want to start something this or if you don't want to start, but you know you need to. And it's never too late to start. Don't ever think you're past, you're past it. It's never too late. So in closing, let's talk about how much so according to the Center for Disease Prevention, it's recommended when it comes to aerobic activity, and if you're gonna be doing moderate aerobic activity, to try and get 150 minutes in a week. And if you're gonna be really doing powerful stuff, 75 minutes is good. Again, you can split this up. You don't have to go right to the 150 off the bat. And actually, you're not gonna do 150 in one go anyway. You can split things up into 10 minutes, my friends, to make it doable. For strength, aim to get a couple of days a week. And again, like I said before, with rest in between. And try to incorporate into your day balance, five minutes a day at least, with one to three minutes of stretching. Maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening. And really remember to be kind to yourself at the end of the day. If you're starting out and you have a day that you miss or you don't hit your goal, please don't berate yourself. Stop holding yourself back. A lot of people stop because they think all is lost. No, get back on the horse start again. You're too worth it. So keep your why top of mind. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to do this? What would it do to help you? And as they say, my friend, you are so worth it. For much more information on this, you will find information on our Facebook page, The Modern Woman's Menopause, and also 
at coachcarolyn.ca. There's so much more to offer you here. So here we are and with the panel again, very excited in particular about this episode because it's, well, all of this is near and dear to my heart, but of course the world of fitness is very near and dear to my heart. So again, I would love to welcome Alison Blackshaw. Thank you. Thank you. Investment advisor with RBC Wealth Management. Mm -hmm. So thanks. I'm always lovely to see you. And you. And Wanda, the same with you. So personal growth coach with Elements of Flow and also a speaker and an author. Thank so you. exciting things happening. So thank you for being mm -hmm. here. So today I just really wanted to talk about whether there are certain forms of movement that have worked for you, mind or body or both or symptoms um, and the different sort of parts of fitness or movement or activity or just general health and wellness we incorporate into our, mm -hmm. our lifestyles or could in order to perhaps help, whether it's with symptoms or to make us stronger you know, however it benefits us. So I'm going to start with, first of all, general activity and movement uh, when it comes to that kind of thing, whether it's cardio, whether it's strength training, whether it's dancing, moving. Is there anything in particular that has helped with you over the years that you've you've increased that stayed the same, but you're grateful you did it? What would you say? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been um, I'd say for the last five years, it's been this constant search for that one thing <laughs> that I can latch on to that is going to make me feel better. Um, and when I say better, that's going to make me feel kind of pliable again okay. and, and feel like I've, um, uh, I'm, I'm hitting, hitting all the, the hits, right? Which <laughs> is cardio and the, and the strength training, et cetera. And so it was a flip flopping between yoga and weight training and running and, None of them seemed to be, um, none of them seemed to be covering everything off. Um, and it was through COVID actually that, and I think I had, I think mentally, and that's I, an important part of all of this, mentally I had sort of resigned myself to, okay, I'm getting older. And so maybe I can't do this mm. anymore, right? Maybe my body doesn't want to do this anymore through COVID um, and being forced to do things at home, I really stumbled upon an app, thank goodness for apps. And one of them was um, just short half hour hit training. Mm. And that has been the, the magic bullet for me. Wonderful. Because it's helped me to understand that, no, I don't have to accept the fact that I'm stiff I just need to work on my mobility. Mm. Wonderful. And so it has helped me to, to do that. And so I feel like I did when we were 30s, 30 something. Oh, and knew wonderful. Each other, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Way back we were when. Teaching <gasps> that's oh, right. Wow. And I think that's super important. I want to ask you yours, mm -hmm. your point as well. But um, I think that's so important is taking the time to find what works for us. It's not having to do what everybody's doing because everybody's doing it. It's finding what works for us because the mm -hmm. only thing that we keep up, will keep us consistent at these things is if we enjoy it. Right. So is there anything, what's been your experience? Is there anything you have found um, that Well, and I helped? think I have tried everything under the umbrella in terms of trying to figure out some sort of physical fitness regime that works for me. Because being of, having my limitations to start with, yes. um, I'm not always able to participate fully depending on what the activity is. And so, you know, I've tried yoga, but um, it was good for the stretching part, but I couldn't necessarily have the strength in order to hold the poses, yes. you know, and I've tried a physical, uh, you know, a trainer, um, but then I'm very prone to injuries. And so we really have to be careful in terms of, you know, how much weight I'm lifting, but I think the thing that has worked the most for me is just plain old walking. Wonderful. Yes. You know, so just being able, and I really, and this is where my husband always complains because I really don't like walking in the city, but I would love walking in 
a forest. Yeah. Or, you know, so going out to all the different trails that we have here in London. Yeah. Um, we're very lucky we to have so much here, but being able to go out to one of the trails. And even if it's just for 15, 20 minutes to be able to walk on a trail. Um, but again, I always have to be aware of my feet getting hot and blistering. Yes. And so I really have to do be careful of my footwear and um, being aware of what type of socks I'm wearing that day even. Yeah. So it's kind of like a whole, it takes a while to prepare to even go out for 20 yeah, minutes. I bet, but it's worth it in the end. <laughs> exactly, because so that really is you. still at least the, you know, the flexibility, the mobility, and I have um, physio, like physiotherapy yes. is another thing that I have definitely stuck with. Um, and of course I see physio, I go to physio for numerous reasons, but uh, the more, the last time that I was kind of asking, it was more strengthening, right? Yes. So strengthening certain muscles, the knees, the hips, the... That's right. You know, and um, being able to do certain exercises that keeps the flexibility and the mobility going. That's right, and that's very important And again, well. a lot of that can still be certain weight-bearing exercises as well, so... That's right, and I think, you know, that's not what every, not everybody realizes and uh, that when we talk about working out, sometimes we can just use our own body weight. It doesn't, mm -hmm. if you don't have, it's it's not a point of, well, I don't have anything at home, so I'm just not, I can't do it. It's getting creative and understanding that you can right. actually do so much with your own body weight. And then, and, and again as well, taking things in short bursts. Like yes. if somebody really doesn't like moving, there's no point in trying to force yourself to do something for, you know, an hour a day. Yeah. You're not gonna stick mm -hmm. to it and then it's not ultimately gonna help you. Whereas if you are able to say, you know what, I'm gonna try 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. for the first week or two and build up, then that sort of makes the person feel accomplished and they get into it more and before they know it, they're they're building it all the way up. Right, exactly. And Another, so, yeah, sorry. just building it from, you know, putting certain things into habit too. Yes, Right. Exactly. So it's like every day I do certain physio stretches just to be able to that's keep right. the joints moving and things like that, which again, are probably all related to menopause too. That's Not right. just the physical issues that I have. Exactly. And so, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. No, I think Wanda actually um, touched on, on a very, uh, good point, which is to say that she mentioned that right now we're focusing on strength training. And I think we need to remember that our bodies are always in flux. Yes. yes. So one of the things that I had to learn for myself was to just give myself permission that if today I don't feel like Love it. Mm -hmm. a run or I don't feel like going to the gym, then a walk in the forest might be the rx yes. for today right you're right so and and we're always changing and we're always needing different things yes. so we don't have to lock ourselves mentally into this very structured routine and that is such a big point and i think if you also have created it where it's just become a part of your day where you know at maybe for some people seven in the morning is the time i work out and they wake up and mm -hmm. they're not feeling like it they've got that time assigned so what could they do in that time anyway and a walk is is fantastic yeah. and the mo you know we all know the research they've done as, with regard to trees and and our mm -hmm. you know mental health and things like that so to actually just go well i've given myself this time what would help me right now and i think the other point because i wanted to we've touched on it already is also the fact that Things like stretch, uh, stretching and mm -hmm. flexibility yes. and mobility are also so important. So in a week, sometimes it's not always about doing the strength training. It's not always about doing the cardio. Sometimes it, or so often, it's about slowing down mm -hmm. and doing the other things for our body, which are so important as well. Mm -hmm. And especially as we age and go through menopause. Like, how do you feel about any of, do you do a lot of stretching and flexibility and things like that? Or do you find that's not really your... Yeah, absolutely. Um, whatever I'm doing, whatever activity that I've chosen for that day uh, is always starts with some sort of mobility or stretching. Um, usually stretching at the end, but some sort of mobility at the beginning because I am finding that I'm stiffer. And mm -hmm. if I don't do these things to loosen myself up, I could get away with it at one time, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, there was a time when I could just go out and and 
hit the pavement cold, right? Yes. And run 10K and come back. And maybe I stretched, maybe I didn't. It didn't really matter. Now it does. That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, absolutely, there. It, I'll feel it the next day if yes. I don't yeah. take that time to to um, loosen up and to stretch and and also um, again the 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 mind body connection. Mm -hmm. I just require that wind down, right? Mm -hmm. After an intense period of activity, mentally, I need to wind down and say, okay, now see how you feel. Let's just tune into how calm you feel now. And let's, let's recognize that feel. I need that now, That's especially right. after the last year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's so important. I think a lot of this, we've said it before, is about being really in tune with our, our mind and our body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really, this isn't, menopause isn't about just food and it's not about just exercise and it's not just about sleep. Everything is so interconnected. Mm -hmm. And, and at the end of the day, it's about being tuned into our bodies and going, mm -hmm. what, what, what do you need now, body? Yes, what exactly. can I do for you? And if it's something slow and quiet and stretchy today, then wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a, a, a friend who is 93 and she's wonderful and she's fit and healthy. And she, I'll never forget, she told me that if something is hurting in her body, like say it's her knee, then she'll stroke her knee and yep. tell her knee that I love you. Yes. I lo and I oh, thought I that's magic, it. right? Yeah. That, that we, I, I very much believe and, uh, and I believe, I think we've just scratched the surface on the mind body connection. I totally agree with yeah. you. And right. I think that, um, so I'm trying to. <laughs> I think so yeah. often. And I agree that. with that in terms of that, having that appreciation, gratitude and love for your mm -hmm. body, no matter what it's presenting at the time. Because exactly. the whole idea of being able to connect with your body, it's like, well, perhaps it will be trying to tell me something mm -hmm. that I can change. Yeah. Um, and so the more that you're connected with it, the more that you might be able to listen to your body as well. You know, it might say, I'm not ready for that run today. Can we go for a walk instead? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just that fact of loving your body, no matter what it's presenting at that time, whatever change is happening. Um, just knowing that it's all kind of the natural progression of what's meant to be in a way. You're right. And I think we so often, you know, body image is a big passion of mine, helping girls and women really embrace themselves. And I think uh, we, spend, we can spend so many years putting our body down and, and somebody complimenting us and going, oh, thank you for my jiggly thigh. You know, we're all, we can often, I know over the years, I've often done that. And it's very much about appreciating what it can do and 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 not caring so much about what other people think about mm -hmm. how, how we look or how we move. Or how, this is mm -hmm. all about what's important to me. What's yeah. gonna get me through this time? What yes. can I do to help myself? And I think that at the end of the day, yes, that mind-body connection is one of the it's one of the biggest pieces to this yeah. i do believe so. and i was just I gonna i was gonna add too just in terms of those symptoms that you are having the more that you say that you hate them the more that you say that you yes. you know dislike them that you want them to go away it's more about trying to you know how can i allow that and what does my body need in order to for things to change so the more that you say I hate having my period, you know, is really what are we actually trying to show the younger ones as well? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Offering exactly. ourselves compassion, I think is one of the yes. hardest things to do, right? So I try to um, think about, well, what would I say to a friend? Mm. Perfect. Who, and and I'll, I'll try to say that to myself. There, but there, you know, we could do a whole episode <laughs> just on the mind-body yes, connection. Yes, for sure. And we are. Oh, yay! Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is strong evidence suggesting pathways between um, your your brain and your body. And I've learned this, and this is a bit off topic. I maybe shouldn't be going here. But I, I've learned through uh, my allergy doctor, actually, mm. that sometimes... Uh, allergic responses can be a learned yeah. thing, a learned connection between the brain and the body. If the body perceives that the brain is saying, you need to be 
on alert. You need to be, mm -hmm. it will. Absolutely. Big believer, big believer in that. It's, uh, yeah. and yes, there's also that anxiety things. piece that yes. can happen as well. <gasps> Am I going to have a hot flash if I yes, go up exactly. to dinner? Am I going to have a breakthrough bleeding somewhere, exactly. right? Or yes. it's like, oh, I can't go swimming today because, yeah. Yeah. So it's like that anxiety that kind of comes in. So you're not necessarily working in tune with your body instead of, yeah, embracing. And, and it that, that way. Well, you know, we'll finish on that note again. We could take this forever, but the the mind body connection, the thought process, the meditation, the mm -hmm. breathing, the slowing down what we're thinking about, and the not resisting against things. I've learned yeah. that myself lately with health is every time I push against mm -hmm. something, which it wasn't the way, things are far worse. As soon as I'm just yeah. sitting back saying, okay, what can I do for myself to get through this? Yes. It's a game changer. Mm -hmm. oh, we could have gone on and on and on. <laughs> I really appreciate this. I would love to see you back sometime if you would come. But for sure. I really, Wanda Davis, again, thank you so much for all of your wisdom you've shared. Well, thank you for having me. And I thank you. I really appreciate you being here as well. It's just been wonderful. Pleasure. I hope it's been thank great you. help to the people watching. Mm -hmm. I hope thank so you. Too. We thought we would try something different at the end of this episode because I've been talking about what the correct things to do are through menopause, but what if I show you as well? Because as they say, picture is worth a thousand words. If I were to say to you, squeeze your abs, what would happen? Would I get a blank stare or would you know exactly what to do? If I were to say, squeeze your glutes, do you know how? If I were to say, sit back, do you know what to be thinking about when I say sit back? No. Too many people go through life where they exercise, but they don't quite know the form. And if you're building your weight and your strength on a form that isn't correct, it's only gonna, it's gonna cry out injury down the road. So you wanna make sure you start with a really, really good base. And so often in the world of fitness, believe it or not, less is more. Start with a weight where you can have extremely perfect form. And this is the kind of place I want you to think about being perfect. So many times I say, it's not perfection you're going for. This kind of thing, I really want you to strive for really, really good form because if you've got the perfect form and you're building up the strength and you're doing it correctly, hopefully down the road injury free, all right? So that's where we're gonna go today because at the end of the day, if you can build on that strength in the right way, you're truly building your strength. I've seen too many people at the gym where they're using extremely heavy weights and can go home and tell their friends that they can bench 5,000 pounds, slight exaggeration, I know, but you get the picture. But at the end of the day, they're doing it with a rounded back. They're not working things properly, engaging their abs. They're gonna cause injury. At the same time, I see too many women as well using really light weights. If this is you and this is all you can do because of an injury, please, perfect, do it because you want to make sure you do something. Anything is better than nothing. So if you have to stay light, you're going to stay light. Keep doing what you're doing. However, if you're somebody that is injury free, you want to be building up those weights that you're using, not going overboard, listening to your body, always being very mindful about what you're doing. But you do want to increase your strength. That's the name of the game. And I'm going to show you how to do that correctly. You're going to start with light weights, get your form right, and then from there, build up the weight as you go. So let's get started. Let's have a little look at what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to leave you by the end of today. You'll go to the gym and you'll know exactly what you're meant to be doing. Well, hello, here we are. We're going to be lying back on the floor. Let's show you what this looks like as well when it comes to your abdominals being engaged. So lying back on the floor, feet just nice and easy and flat. Just relax everything, all right? So there's no engagement going on, which if you were to put your hand underneath your spine, you would notice that there's a gap, all right? We all have that, most of us have that nice little curve of the back. So putting your hand under there, there's a little gap. Now, why don't you put your hand under there and keep it there? And again, put your hand on top and keep it there as well. So go from relaxing to, and breathing, don't forget, but go from that position and now pull belly button towards the spine, 
And what happens? You feel the back press into the hand, yes? That's how you know you're doing it correct when it comes to lying on the floor. So again, whatever exercises you're doing, perhaps you're doing something with the chest, you would start first, pull belly button to spine, press the back towards the floor, and then you would get into your upper body. Or perhaps you're doing some lower body and really working the abs with your legs, pull belly button to spine, and then doing something from this position. Whatever it looks like, the first thing we do, pull belly button to spine. Now, the other point that I'm going to make when it comes to this lying down on the floor, you'll hear people say, pull belly button to spine, press your back into the floor. Everybody's, we're all built differently. Everybody's spine is different. Everybody's hips are different, pelvis, everything. So there's gonna be a lot of people that are, I'm not able to get my back towards the floor. You're not actually going for that. You're listening to your body. And as with any kind of workout, the best workout to do is the one that works for you. So you want to instead imagine you're drawing belly button to spine. And in doing so, your lower body under you will go to where it's able to go to. So for some people that will be pressing their lower back into the floor and some people might be able to flatten it into the floor, but there's going to be other people there due to back positioning, things going on with their spine that aren't going to be able to, and you don't want to force yourself. So the key here, lying on the floor, pulling belly button to spine, breathing, and wherever your back ends up is where it's meant to be. Does that make sense? So just as we're standing, pull belly button to spine, feel the engagement, breathe. Once you're set up there, off you go, you're off to the races and you can do your next bit of exercising. Next, I'm gonna talk about lunging. Let's get into that positioning now. So now we're gonna talk about how to lunge and as with anything, form is crucial because you know, or we know, that you can either lunge without hand weights, you can do lunges themselves, you can do lunges with a barbell across your back. You can do lunges with, with um, free weights. There's so many ways of doing lunges, kettlebell, bands, the works. At the end of the day, you want to have the core engaged while you do them, and you want to have correct form so that when you build the strength, because these legs are powerhouses, when you build the strength, when you build on the strength, you're doing it correctly. All right, the first thing is, even though I am not wearing shoes because I'm showing you this as a visual and I want you to see how my feet are, please, when you're doing things like lunges and squats and working out, do wear running shoes that work for you for your workouts, all right? That's really important. So if this is one of those do as I say, not as I do. I just want you to see it's more easy or easier for me to show you my how my feet are going when we're in this position. With a lunge, what we're actually doing is you're taking one leg back. You're going to have the back heel off the floor. You're going to have the front knee nice and bent. You're going to pull belly button to spine. And when you do a lunge, what you're doing is you're keeping your upper body naturally upright. And what I mean by that is you want to keep it upright. There may be a tiny tilt as you lower down because that's the way you're built. But what you're not doing with a lunge is bending your body forward and lifting it up. I see too many people do that. Imagine your spine or your back is against a wall. You're sliding down and you're sliding up. Now, before you get into thing, anything, what I'd love you to try is a couple of imagine a couple of practice lunges. Because what you want to do is as you get into this motion, how do you feel with your legs? Your front foot, you should be able to press into the heel and wiggle your toes off the floor as you lower down. So as I lower down, my heel is pressed into the floor. If I were to wiggle my toes, it forces my weight into my heel. That means you've got the correct positioning for that front leg, all right? The back foot, you're up on your toes. You're staying up on your toes. And friends, another really good way of doing this is actually to do a lunge, a practice lunge, with your back foot against the wall, because that will keep the heel up, all right? So when you lower down, can you lower down and have this back leg 90 degrees? So I always say to people, you know, if you can do 90 with the front, 90 behind, because again, what I see is too many people with this leg here, they do a lunge and they push forward, 
All right, there's way too many people that do it that way and or while bending forward as well. So you want the back leg far enough back that you can lift the heel, you can lower yourself down, you're pushing into the front heel, this leg is 90 degrees, and let's not forget these babies, the abs are engaged. So pulling belly button to spine, which is what we start with before we even get into this. From here, power yourself up. Feel the energy come up through your foot. So it's lifting you head up towards the ceiling, again, as opposed to what you don't want to do, lower down, push forward, lower down, push forward. All right, it's very much use the power of these legs, lower yourself down, engage, lift up. And again, lower yourself down, engage, power up. All right, that's how you're going to be doing a correct lunge. And then from that, you of course can really start incorporating weight if and when the time comes. Now, we also have the side lunge that is important or that we want people like to do as well. What you're doing with the side lunge is your legs are wider than your hips. Again, always starting with our belly button pulled to our spine and your feet are more or less lined up forward. Again, all of us are built differently with our hips. So everybody's gonna be slightly different or if you have any questions, always reach out to me and ask me. But for the most part, feet are forward. Now you're gonna have your legs wide enough. And again, what I find with a lot of people is they tend to not want to go very wide. Maybe they're afraid that they're gonna fall into the splits or something. Go wide enough that again, do a little practice lunge. You don't have to go far down, but just bend the one knee and make sure you can push into the heel of this leg that is bending. Push into the heel. What you want to avoid is rolling over on the foot. All right? So power the, the core, power the legs. The one leg is straight, but there is uh, an exception with this. You're bending your leg. Some people may have something going on with their hip or a knee where they have to bend this leg slightly. Again, it's how we're all built. So you're not gonna force the issue and keep it straight if it doesn't work for you. If it does work for you, straight is the name of the game. Engage those abs and just lower down, dig into the heel and lift yourself up. Your abs are engaged, so you're pulling belly button to spine. If you're going to put your hands on your body while you're doing this, please put them on your thighs, put them on the meaty part of your leg, please avoid the knee. Because whether you do that in a lunge or a squat, if you're putting your hands on your knee, all your body weight is going into that hand, into that knee, and that is going to cause injury in itself as well. So you want to make sure, engage nice and strong, squeeze the glutes, which means contracting those beautiful little cheekies of yours, and then down you go. Dig into the heel and lift up. Now I'm gonna finish with showing you this from the side because what I want you to think about is your upper body. Your upper body naturally with this kind of thing goes with the flow in that, hands on my thighs, I'm bending the one leg, and my body tilts forward ever so slightly and lifts up, engaging those abs. It's moving, I'm moving with my body, I'm moving with the move, all right? So when we're doing this kind of side lunge, we're not keeping our body upright. Squeeze those abs, and you're doing a tiny little tilt and a lift up. But at the same time, we're not doing it where we're bending forward, lifting up totally going to injure something. So pull belly button to spine, dig into that heel, bend that leg, lift it up, and less thinking really, really helps with this kind of thing. Don't think so much about everything, just get that form right on that lunge and the upper body will follow. So that is how you do a lunge, and that is how you do a side lunge. I'm also gonna show you how to do something for the inner thigh, and then we'll finish with the squat. So with the inner thigh, what we're doing here is we're now turning, and I don't know if you can see my feet, but regular side lunge, I had your feet facing forward. Now what you're gonna do is we're gonna turn them slightly to the corner. Things to think about. You want to make sure that your toes line up with your knee, which lines up with your hip. And it may sound funny, but sometimes you might see people with their knees in, you want to make sure everything lines up so it's natural. 
This one is very much imagining you're sliding up and down a wall. You've got a wall behind you. You can even do this kind of thing slightly in front of a wall. Pull belly button to spine. You're gonna feel your pelvis tilt under slightly. You can have your hands on your thighs. And as you lower down, press your knees away. So lower it down, press the knees back. If you were to look down, you would be able to see between, in front of your knee, your big toe of each foot, all right? And lift yourself up. Again, what you want to avoid is as you lower, bringing those knees in and lifting. Press the knees back, press them away. Feel all of these muscles engage. Try not to fall over like I was. And at the same time, less is more. Because if going down to here means you can keep those legs pressed open and then squeeze up and you're really working those inner thighs, great. If going down slightly more means you're bending your body forward or the legs are coming in, there's no point in doing it. You're just gonna create injury for yourself. So engage the abs, relax the shoulders, feet are out to the corner, nice and long in the spine. Lower yourself down, dig into the heels, even bring your toes off the floor like I do every single time to make sure your weight's in your heels and press your legs open. You know you're doing it right and you're feeling it here, a little bit in the tush too, and then squeeze and lift. And again, the beauty of this kind of thing is you can start incorporating just your arms. You can incorporate weights with it. You can do it with a band. You can do so many things with this kind of thing. Please always making sure that if you're going to do something overhead, come down and then lift up. Just because I'm really wary, I want people to always be thinking of their back health. All right? So that is it for this wide stance. Some people call it a squat, other people a lunge. It's not really a lunge. Press those knees back, lift it up, and then you're going to find you're just going to be toning up all those places you want to tone up. A thousand three, a thousand. Oh, hey, hi. <gasps> okay. You've heard about fitness. You've heard about the mind body connection, but let's finish with this one thought. And the thought is this, you don't have to do a thousand of something. It is far more to have the quality of exercise over the quantity. So when you're thinking about a fitness regime and what you can incorporate into your world, try not to pressure yourself. Think about what you're doing, the quality of it, what you enjoy, and then you're really helping yourself get somewhere.